How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donahue here once again. This time we're going to take a look at reaction rate, concentration, and rate laws. So our objectives will be to determine the rate law for various reactions of different reaction orders and calculate and determine the proper units for the rate constant. So let's get into it. So not all reactants are created equal. So the concentration of one reactant may have a different level of influence over the reaction rate than another reactant. So in this example, A plus X gives me Z. For example, we may double the concentration of X and the rate doubles, but we may double the concentration of A and the rate quadruples. So they don't have the same influence on the reaction rate because it has to do with the mechanism. But why? So which scenario is the concentration of A more important? Is scenario one where A and X have to collide? Or here we have two A's having to collide with an X. Which one is the concentration of A more important? So it's definitely going to be scenario two because we need more A in this mechanism. So the mechanism determines the importance of each reactant. So rate law. Rate law expresses the influence each reactant's concentration has on the rate of reaction. So if this is my generic reaction, the rate is a proportionate to the concentration of A to some power and B to some power. So it has to do with the concentration of the reactants. So the rate law expression is going to be stated as such. So the rate is equal to some constant times the reactant concentration to some power times the other reactant concentration to some power. So K is a constant and the coefficients from the equation mean nothing in the rate law expression. Notice how this little a and little b aren't in the rate law constant at all. The units for the constant depend on the exponents for the reactants in the rate law expression. So the units will be whatever they need to be so that the rate ends up being molar per second. So rate law, the exponents, or the reaction order. So the reaction order describes the influence each reactant has on the reaction rate. It's what the exponent is. So if this is my generic rate uh, equation for some reaction, it's, you know, the rate equals a constant times x to the first power times y to the second power. So the reaction order would be first order in terms of x because its coefficient is 1 and it would be second order in terms of y because its exponent is 2. I might have said coefficient, I meant exponent. So overall we would say this is a third order reaction overall because we have a first order and a second order so 1 plus 2 gives me 3 so the whole reaction is third order overall. Reaction order doesn't need to be a whole number. You can have fractions as well. Sometimes you'll see a reaction order one half. Um, so, you know, don't think it just has to be a whole number. So how do we know what the exponents are? You know, where are they coming from? Well, that's going to have to be experimentally determined based on the initial rates and the concentrations. So let's take a look at an example, determining the reaction order. So you have multiple trials with reactants at varying concentrations. So you can see here we got a column, three different experiments, and we have changes in the concentrations for the reactants. And then we have the initial rates overall for each thing. So you got to find two trials where only the concentration of one reactant is different. And then see how that change affects the reaction rate. Then you got to determine whatever the, the exponent must be. So here we have the rate law expression and we got to figure out what those values are for m and n so if i'm trying to figure out x i want to find two trials where x changes but y is the same so for x i need x to change but y to be the same hey i see trials one and three because x changes but y doesn't so let's see what happens for x well we start with x to some power and then between 1 to 3, what happens to the concentration of x? Well, it quadruples. Yeah, look at that. So now we have 4x to some power. But what happens to the rate? Let's take a look. So we go from a 2.6 to a 41.6. So 41.6 divided by 2.6, and we get 16. So we quadrupled the concentration, but then the rate went up by 16. So what does the exponent of m have to be? Well, hey, 4 to some power gives me 16. I know that's got to be 2. So I know that this is going to be the number 2. So i got to do the same process for y now. I go, all right, let me find two trials where y's concentration changes, but x stays the same. And I'm going to see trial 1 and trial 2. 
So let's see what happens. We got y to some power n, and then between trials 1 and 2, we double the concentration. So 2y now to some power. And what happens to the rate? Well, the rate was 2.6, and then it stayed 2.6. So the rate didn't change at all. So what's n got to be? n's got to be 0. That's the only way that can happen. So we have our final rate law expression to be r equals k times x to the second power. And if you wanted to write it out, you could say times y to the zero power, but anything to the zero is just one, so you don't even really need to write it. So there you go. Here's another example. The following rate data is for reaction 2NO plus 2H2 gives me N2 plus 2H2O. Calculate the reaction order of N and O and give the rate law equation. So I know generically I'm going to start rate equals constant times NO to some power times H2 to some other power. So if I'm trying to figure out NO, which trials do I want? Well, I want NO to change and there's only one trial where it changes. So hopefully No, that didn't, that didn't happen. Oh, wait. All right. Sorry. My bad. Work through it with me. Together, we will figure this out. So I know four is going to have to be one of them, but I want another trial where H2 has the same concentration. So, hey, I want three and four. So I'm going to go with trials three and four. So let's take a look. I go from having NO and I go and I double the concentration. So two NO to some power. And what happens to the rate? Well, the rate goes from 0.3 to 1.21. So that is a, essentially a quadruple. So if I doubled my concentration, and my rate quadrupled, that must be second order. So I know that, hey, I can get rid of this X now. I know NO is second order. So now I gotta do the same process for H2. I gotta find where H2 is different between two trials, but NO is the same. And it looks like trials one and two will suit that bill just fine. So I'm gonna take a look at trials one and two. So in trial one, H is 0.15. And then we change it to 0 0.30. So we double the concentration of that H2. But what happens to the rate? Well, let's take a look it went from 0 0.076 to 0 0.15. So we've also doubled the rate. So what does Y have to be if it did the same thing as the concentration? Well, that has to be equal to one. So now we know it's first order in terms of H2. And there's my rate law equation, right? It hasn't asked me to solve for K or anything yet. So that is my rate law equation right up here. It is second order in terms of NO, first order in terms of H2, third order overall. So determining the value of the rate law constant. Once you know the rate law equation and the order for each reactant, you just pick one of the trials and you solve for K. It's really that, that simple. So let's take a look at this example. Oh, this is the same example. So I know that the rate equals the NO to the second power and Y, or I'm sorry, H2 to the first power times K. So if I were to rearrange that, I know K is going to equal my rate divided by NO squared times H2. So now I just plug and chug. So why don't I just pick experiment one? It doesn't really matter which one I pick. So my rate is 0 0.076 molar per second. I'm going to divide that by 0 0.6 squared times 0 0.15 and this is molar per second i always forget units molar per second and then i'm going to get an answer here i cheated i'm going to get 1.4 as my numbers and let's take a look at what happens to the units oh this is not molar per second it's just mole molar right so i have molar per second divided by molar squared times molar so i have molar over molar to the cube. So I'm going to be left with molar to the minus two power. And then also the seconds is going to stick around. You're going to see seconds to the minus one often. So that is going to be my value for K.
And that's rate law. That's it. All right. So summarize. How do you determine the rate law for various reactions of different reaction orders? How do you calculate and determine the proper units for the rate constant? And I got one more problem to help you out if you're not feeling great about it. So stick around. If not, it's been great. I'll see you when I see you. So the following experimental data were obtained for the reaction, right? This is our reaction. 2A plus B gives me C. Determine the rate law expression as well as the value for the rate law constant. So again, let's figure out our, our starting point. I know that the rate is going to equal A, the concentration A to some number, times B, concentration of B to some number, times K. Normally they put K first, but I keep forgetting about it. So let's figure out how we're going to figure out the order for A. Well, I got to find two reactions where A is different, but B is the same. So it looks like experiment one and two will help me out here. So in experiment one, I have a concentration of 0.4. So I'm just going to call that A to some power. And then in two, I've doubled the concentration. And what happens to the rate? Well, it goes from 0.0056 to 0.0055. So overall, it doesn't really change at all. So how is that possible? If I've changed the concentration, what's X got to be? X has to be zero. So I do the same process for B. Take a look. I want to find two experiments where B changes, but A stays the same. And it looks like one and three will be the ones I want to look at. So I take a look. Experiment one. B has a concentration of 0.2, so I'm just going to call that B to some power Y. Then we change it, and what do we do to the concentration of B? We double it, so it's 2B, well, not 2B, right, to some power. And what happens to the rate? Well, it goes from 0.0056 to 0.00, I'm sorry, 0 0.0223. So maybe i got to do some math for that, 0 0.0223 0 divided by 0 0.0056 and I get 4. So what's y got to be if I've doubled the concentration and the rate quadrupled? y has got to be 2. So I get my rate law expression figured out. So a is going to be to the 0 power, b is going to be to the second power. So it's 0 order in terms of a, second order in terms of b, second order overall. So now how do I figure out k? Well, K is going to equal the rate divided by the concentration of B squared, right? I can omit the A because it's to the zero power. To the zero power is one for everything. So just pick one of the trials. I like going with the first one. So 0 0.0056 molar per second divided by 0 0.20 molar squared. And I'm going to get, I wrote that down. 0.14 and the units that are going to be left with are going to be molar to the negative one and second to the negative one because look I got molar per second divided by molar squared so keep change flip that's going to cancel out I'm going to end up with one molar on the bottom and I'm also going to end up with seconds on the bottom so that's how you get that so yeah that's that's how you do that this is your rate law expression and this is your value for k hope you found that helpful if not i'm sorry okay bye